Hey everyone, welcome to Coach Dev Academy. My name is Suelo. Made in, we're gonna see my lap with a Porsche Cup at Zenvort. The lap is at 135.7. We're gonna see the lap and then I'm gonna talk about corner by corner and the best approaches to take them very quickly. All right, now going into the lap itself. So this is a tricky one. Uh, there are many possible braking references for this corner. And this corner on this car is should be treated as a very aggressive double apex, although you don't necessarily come back to the second apex. So you see, we, we break, we get the first apex here, and then we get thrown a little bit out. But then on the way back, we don't actually go all the way back. We go out it's this is similar to the right hander after brooklyn uh that hamilton did uh if, if you guys check his silverstone lap in the qualifying lap you see it's a similar thing you have like a double apex but you don't necessarily have to come back to the second apex you already get back on power and let the car flow all the way to the outside now coming back to the braking references uh the white line here is a white good thing is a good thing but this is this is going to be useful mostly if you're fighting for position and you're on the inside and you're too far away from these uh objects here on the left but because because you're we're gonna break quite before that so as you can see here uh, i'm using this marshall post as a reference but not only that i'm also using these little things here i don't know what, how what to call them uh as the peak pressure reference so as you can see, I start breaking here, boom. But my peak pressure is here. I'm not, I'm not deliberately having a reference for both. I, I'm basically just looking at this thing here. Um, but uh, yeah, that's, that's where my peak pressure is. And then we want to patiently wait and turn in very slowly. We're, we're turning in with extremely light hands. We don't want to force the turn in because we're going to be braking hard into the corner it's double apex so we carry the trail braking heavily into the corner and if you try to turn in sharply from the from 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 here you will already start locking up the front and the car will go straight into the gravel um so very light hands and then towards here when we realize the car is getting on the camber part we can start adding more 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 steering and then we kind of punch the throttle not straight to 100 because you're going to spin but Punch the throttle in a way that you get that good rotation. Uh, not get that extra rotation, just maintain the rotation that you had before. And then you allow the car to flow to the outside with light hands. Don't pull the car all the way to the right while doing this extra acceleration because that's going to make the car oversteer and you're going to lose a lot of time. What you want to do is you want to generate... It's, it's as if we were transferring the, 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 the function of rotation from the steering to the throttle. The throttle is going to be maintaining or managing that rotation on the exit, not the steering. As soon as you get back on power, because we are transferring the stress to the rear tires, we relax our hands 
so we don't add too much stress on the front tires as well because that is what makes the car spin you spin if you get back on power while maintaining the same force on the steering if you get back on power and relax your hands a little bit you allow the car to flow to the outside and that is quick then coming for this corner here i'm using uh, the end of this curve here as a reference uh, to turn in although you can see that i'm breaking way before that i'm patiently churning in there's a lot of grip on the entry of this corner but then right after around here where we get back on power if we put the camera right here you can see that we can't see the other side which means we are falling if you if you if whenever you get on a blind corner it's because that part that blocks the vision has no grip so here no grip the car is falling 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 and uh because i know that the next corner is uh, such a long hairpin uh, we can actually double apex it so it's not that important that we bring the car all the way to the right even though the next corner is to the left you can see that i stay basically here i come i bring a little bit like i don't know four fifth <laughs> to the left of the track so really not caring about bringing the car that much i prefer to carry the extra speed here and then i stay there okay double apex so first apex here but i'm still breaking still breaking still breaking still breaking still breaking okay imaginary apex and then second apex this one yeah we are gonna uh use the white line not like t1 that we were kind of ignoring the second apex this one we will actually need that because we we need to rotate right here where we have a lot of grip but as soon as we change colors here you can see that the the track changed colors this is same it's a similar thing we we have a lot less grip uh here well it's it's kind of flat in comparison to the camber that we have here so if we have camber here and it's flat here we have less grip on the flat part so we are rotating here and we instinctively think that the car is going to rotate the same but this is not going to happen if you try to rotate the same around here where the camber is over we uh, have less grip the car will spin really you can spin pretty quickly here if you expect the car to have the same grip that it had on on the cambered part and this wall here is very famous anyways we keep going this is easy flat out just make sure you don't scrub the front turn lightly and also on this one what you want to do is to kind of like touch the end of this little curb here you can see very end of it and then we allow the car to go to the outside here we want to be very very close to the white line uh and as you can see i'm starting to break even quite early the entry here is on a crest on top of the hill we're falling falling because we're falling we have no grip so you break with light brakes light hands on entry you you're really like taking care of the tires where the grip is not there and then you wait you wait you wait you wait patiently sliding to the inside it's a very long corner still falling still falling still falling still falling still light hands still light breaking and around here we start getting on a compression so at the second half of the corner we start feeling the car gripping and gripping and gripping and here we have lots of grip and here we can accelerate and here we can churn a lot more and here we can ask for everything because here we have a compression so now we can have and around here towards the end it gets flat so it's neutral so on entry we have a compress we have a crest so no grip mid corner we have a compression so lots of grip but at the very end of the corner we have we're flat so we have neutral grip it's still a little bit less grip than we had uh at mid corner so you have to pay attention again whenever you have lots of grip here we expect instinctively that the car rotates the same at the exit but it's going to rotate slightly less here just slightly less and that's why we end up getting off tracks here because we think the car is going to turn the same and then suddenly it's not rotating well, be aware that it's going to happen every lap because every lap you're going to get the car in the same place uh, where the grip is lesser lesser and then going for the next corner what do we have we have this little kink here that i don't know whoever designed it but they they didn't didn't like race drivers because it makes it so difficult to actually prepare the right hander so what you need to do is you need to actually go on the grass a little bit you see i'm cutting the grass because I want to prepare as much as possible to the left and then finally get on the brakes and start the corner. And then we can really, really have, um, well, as wide of an arc as we can. You see that in other cars where when we have a little bit more grip, we can use 
even this part of the white line, but because this car, we don't have enough grip. We're struggling already from this corner. We don't have the time to bring the car all the way to the right to go around this kink. So we cut a little bit of the grass and that's more or less where we can put the car and then we're already braking. So we don't have time to prepare any more than that. And then here we want to uh, hit this curb. I actually missed this. You can touch the right tires on this second smaller curb here. So there's probably 0 0.04, 0 0.05 here because I missed it. And power and stay on the outside. And then we were doing a very long trail braking all the way patiently, patiently. Same thing, also missed the apex here, but I was really on the limit of the, of the car on these two right-handers. And because of that, I was able just to do my best lap. So really waiting and waiting and then power, relaxing your hands. Same thing. If you get back on power and you maintain the force, the car is going to spin. So really wait and then open up, but not as much as possible because we don't have the time. We're going to open up a little bit, but then we're already braking. And same thing, patiently waiting for the car to rotate. You can see that I'm carrying a quite heavy trail braking, let's say 15 to 20 percent all the way. And I wait and I wait and I wait. Don't abuse the front. Just waiting, feeling that the car is, is you know, um, rotating with the help of the brakes. If you turn too much, the brakes are not going to be able to help the front. You're going to lock the inside and the car is going to go straight. So you need to have, uh, even here, it's kind of that half light hands, just so you can really feel the limit of the front tires. If you add too much force, then you get into understeer. And then back on power, same thing, light hands. What did I do here? I ended, I ended up having heavy hands a little bit too much and I rotated more than I expected and lost the rear. So because of that, I had to do some counters here, there, lost uh, more or less 0 0.03, 0 0.04 here on this little overshear moment. Then we go to uh, one of the trickiest parts of the track. I am using the white line here as a reference. And this is great because if you're fighting for position, then you can just use the white line even here on the inside as well. Um, it's a good reference. And we get peak pressure. Um, actually, it's around here, but I never look at the 100. I just look at the white line. And between the white line and the beginning of the curve, I have my peak pressure there. Then we wait quite well. Uh, we want to turn in quite late. And then when, when we churn, though, we want to really commit to as much rotation as we can because it's going to be important to set up the hairpin after. So as much rotation as possible here and on top of the curb, back on power, keep the car rotating. And actually, you see, be quite aggressive on the power. And then here, when we're, when we're about to change direction, I am going to decide whether I'm using first or second based on how much the car is rotating on entry. So in some laps, based on how you did the corner before, second is fine because you can see that they, whoa, the car is turning very well. But in this lap, for example, I felt that I needed the first gear to turn. So I actually went to first gear. Let's, let's go full, full speed so you can hear it. Third, second, power. Now turn, first. Because I felt like I needed that first gear just for the extra, extra engine braking. And you can see that I even, I, I, I go to first and then back to second. So first, second. So this is a tool that you can use in case you realize that, oh my God, I'm going wide. You can go to first gear, get that extra rotation, and then get back to second right before you get back on power. And then uh, on the exit here, make sure you are aware that, the, again, we can't see the curve, you see, because that is a crest. The car is going to fall a little bit towards this exit, and you need to be aware of that and not ask for too much rotation on top of the mini hill here because if you do that you're gonna spin to the left so allow the car to use all this track here you have this room you can see we have we can use the first then second then third layer here just don't get the dirt and then you on the way back you can touch a little bit of the dirt no problem and then going for the last corner we have a similar thing we have you know the beginning of the cambered part this is this is the the, the weird thing because the track is flat, but then it tilts right before going to the corner. So the corner itself has a lot of grip, but the transition between the straight before and the actual corner, we have that let going up to what is going to be a cambered corner. So be careful because going up and then falling back on the, on the corner actually makes the car behave like it's going on top of a crest. 
as, as, uh, as if it's jumping, so it has less grip. So make sure you feel these slight differences in grip here. Again, we start breaking, now we're going up, we turn in, but now we're falling. We're falling, 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 and now we're back on the camber. Now we have lots of grip, lots of grip, and power. And now we have lots, lots, lots of grip because this is uh, a very pronounced camber. And then on the exit here, we're going to see the same thing. We're going to fall because the camber is over. So whoop, here we fall. And then we want to stay here because we want to prepare this next corner that is mostly let out for 99% of the cars, except for probably the V8 supercars, the NASCAR uh, cars and the pickup. So here we are going to have to lift a little bit, lift, wait, wait, wait. We can't do this flat out, flat out. And then you see when we realize that we are towards the end of this curve here, we can finally go flat out. And still here you will see that it's quite difficult. Uh, here you will get enough track if you put the full tire on the grass. At this point I was pretty close to getting enough track. This is the very limit guys the very limit if you get a little bit more than that actually this is this is the full tire um let me see I, yeah i think it's the middle of the car on the grass you see that i'm pretty close to get an off track here and i remember getting this off track several times so this is basically the limit if you use a little bit more than that you get an off track anyways that is it 35 7 tricky roller coaster track I hope you guys enjoyed this and I will see you next week. Bye.